happening tonight in Vancouver. Our thoughts are with you. Our resources are behind you. Getting a first-hand look at BC's wildfire front line, the Premier promising support for those affected by blazes increasing by the day. We have like three to 400 meters of problems almost instantly. Another out of control wildfire, this time in the resort town of Sycamus, BC. What started the flames that forced more than a thousand people to evacuate? God knows if it's gonna be just one month, one more. For Canadians ready to cross over into the US, the message from the neighbors down south, not quite yet. What the delay means for families and the BC economy. This is City News Everywhere. As wildfires rage across the province, new ones starting daily, danger zones increasing and shifting. BC's premier is in the interior, getting a first-hand look at equipment fighting the fires that have the province again in a state of emergency. And promising support is there for people out of their homes or losing out on business because of the blazes. We are in an early, early fire season. We've got uh, weeks, perhaps months to go. Uh, very challenging circumstances for these individuals. And challenging for businesses and communities who were hoping the summer tourism season would help them recover from pandemic losses, including hotels, tour guides, wine producers. On the agriculture side, uh, they were hoping for bumper crops with decent weather. Uh, now we have uh, berry crops, cherries, and other soft fruits that have been uh, profoundly impacted by the heat. And of course, uh, they'll also be impacted by the fires. The silver lining of the pandemic, he says, is relationships made, lessons learned, and support processes now in place because of it will make accessing and providing help easier. To make changes in policy and, and programs to help people, uh, sometimes over the course of a weekend. Sometimes it took longer than that. But we're going to continue doing that until we're well and truly past this and back to what we can characterize as normal. Normal is off in the distance for residents who are ready to leave at a moment's notice. The numbers are not yet uh, anywhere near, in terms of evacuations, anywhere near where we were in 2017 and 2018. However, uh, the weather uh, forecasts are grim. Including wind warnings and dry lightning likely. So many more evacuations are expected and planning is underway to be ready. That means working with uh, the hospitality sector, working with uh, post-secondary institutions, uh, Thompson Rivers University, uh, for example, and other, uh, other institutions in the interior that have housing available. And again, urging people to not hesitate leaving if ordered to do so. For those uh, who have been evacuated or under evacuation order, uh, right across the, the Kootenays in the interior and, and here in the south, uh, our, our thoughts are with you. Our resources are behind you. For City News in Victoria, I'm News 1130's Lisa Yuzda. So basically we can see it right out our back window. And there's just smoke going up. Uh, through a valley. A wildfire continues to burn near the resort town of Sycamus, B.C., forcing just over a thousand people to evacuate. It was started by a crash just outside of town on Tuesday. What transpired was a van uh, left the road uh, just outside of Sycamus, um, or in an area we call Two Mile, and um, it happened to hit a hydroelectric pole that had a transformer on it. So the pole fell over and, of course, sparks uh, transferred all the way from the pole when it exploded all the way down the wires. And now you've got not just a, a meter of, of problems. You, we had like three to four hundred meters of problems almost instantly. Mayor Terry Rise says the immediate area was evacuated. Then crews began to battle the flames. Within 20 minutes, they had aerial attack on this fire. The fire is still out of control and grew Tuesday night, and the rest of the town is on evacuation alert. But in downtown Sycamus, things are mostly business as usual. Jenny Brooks lives and works at the ice cream shop in town. Yesterday, for sure, we were definitely considering closing. It was a lot scarier. The fire went from 10 to 60 hectares in a really short amount of time. There was still customers coming, and there's still people walking around doing stuff, acting normal <laughs> as if everything's okay so we decided to stay open and it made some people you know happy it gave them a place to kind of sit down and just 
relax a little. Well, right behind me, you can see what we're doing. We're bottling. Dean Perry continues to operate his distillery and isn't concerned, oh, especially once he saw the wind pushing the fire away from town. No, I'm not nervous at all. We got the camper packed, ready to go if we have to. As for those people who have had to evacuate, the mayor says they've been able to find places to stay. Well, the m majority of them found their own way out, but uh, we also arranged uh, some motels, some in Salmon Arms, some here. Uh, we opened up our senior center. 33 firefighters and 10 pieces of heavy equipment continue to build guard around the fire on Wednesday, which is estimated to be around 130 hectares. In Vancouver, Kirjunos, City News. Survivors call for a criminal investigation as they prepare to search for unmarked graves at Mohawk Institute Residential School. We know that every last acre needs to be searched. With Canada set to reopen its border to fully vaccinated U.S. citizens, it looks like our neighbours to the south will not be returning the favour, at least for now. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security is extending COVID-19 restrictions on land travel from Canada until at least August 21st. Experts say the White House will keep the Mexico land border closed as well. Fully vaccinated Americans will be able to drive across the border into our country as of August 9th. It's been so close and now it's like oh, another month and God knows if it's going to be just one month, one more. Canadians ready to reunite with friends and family in the U.S. will have to wait a little while longer. The U.S. has extended its ban on non-essential travel across land borders until August 21st. The decision hits hard for many families living here in B.C., being just a drive away from their loved ones, yet still divided. We can say we can wait another month, but it's very, very uh, emotionally very difficult. Minor Campos is an American living in Coquitlam. He's heartbroken and hasn't seen his daughter and grandchildren who live in Seattle for 18 months. That's probably the most difficult part that uh, we know that we are basically like uh, two and a half, three hours away from, from seeing my daughter, my grandson. But uh, for the last 18 months, not being able to go there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult. And now we just came to this being so close. And now it's like oh, another month. And God knows if it's going to be just one month, one more. Wednesday's news comes off the back of Canada's decision earlier this week to open borders to fully vaccinated Americans on August 9th. I can't predict or control what the U.S. does. I will say that uh, I do know that Canadians have, uh, there's more vaccinations in Canada than there is in the United States. And based on uh, my experience talking to people, looking at uh, opinion research, I, I rather doubt that people will be lining up in large numbers to travel south until they feel confident that the pandemic is well and truly behind us. Canadian officials say reopening is an incremental process and not a change we will see overnight. The fact that we see vaccinations going up, cases coming down means we can start to reopen the border incrementally. We're doing that. Reopen our economy. We're doing that. And that is how we're going to accelerate our economic recovery and chart out the next uh, chapter uh, in this uh, in Canada here. Air travel between the two countries is still an option, albeit a more expensive route. The United States um, didn't want to put the airlines and flight attendants in the position of trying to verify what is considered essential and what is considered not essential. I think because there's sort of a third party, you know, private sector role with air travel, um, from a sort of management standpoint, again, it was much more simple to allow that air travel to continue regardless of trip purpose. When it comes to family matters, Campos wants to see Canada take more initiative. We would like to see Canada uh, maybe uh, asking a little bit more questions you know to the americans and see if the if they can they can be a solution to this you know at least uh, for um, families you know in vancouver ashley burr city news there are 78 new cases of COVID-19 in B.C. and no new deaths have been reported in the last day. Just over 80% of eligible people 12 and up have received at least one dose of a vaccine and just over 55% are fully vaccinated. 48 people are currently in hospital with the virus, 16 are in the ICU.
It seems weird that just stating that our staff are vaccinated is so, something so controversial. A website listing businesses with fully vaccinated staff taken down after the list is used to target those businesses for harassment. The integrated homicide investigation team has been called out to Langley after a body was found in a pickup truck that was engulfed in flames. Emergency crews first got a call about a vehicle fire at around 7 o'clock last night at 82nd Avenue and 197th Street. That's where they found a red Ford F-150 pickup truck on fire. When the flames were put out, they found a body. The victim has not yet been identified, and it's not clear if this is related to the ongoing Lower Mainland gang conflict. Survivors of the Mohawk Institute Residential School in Brantford have now asked that the search for grave sites here at the facility be conducted as a criminal investigation. The facility was the first of its kind to open in 1828. Between that time and its closing in 1970, it was relocated once and burnt down twice, meaning the search to come is expected to be difficult. One of the survivors, Don Hill, spoke in front of the steps of the building Wednesday afternoon. Many of these children were un are unaccounted for. Some disappeared and we were told they ran away. We never saw them again and neither did their families. What we know is that the TRC discovered records of at least 54 death records in the 142 years associated with the school. What we don't know is where those little bodies are buried. We know that throughout the Institute's history, there was an upwards of close to 500 acres that formed the school property. We know that every last acre needs to be searched. In a written statement, Ontario's chief coroner says the Ontario Forensic Pathology Service and Office of the Chief Coroner will support investigations and provide scientific and technical support in examining burial sites of children's remains found in or on former Indian residential schools. Chief Hill of the Six Nations also announcing here today that the elected council will support an office representing survivors with $1 million in interim funding until previously announced federal funding and provincial funding are obtained. The Federal Department of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs says they have started distributing funds and they are aware of the request from Six Nations. In the meantime, before that search of roughly 500 acres gets underway, the community is calling on Justin Trudeau, Canada's Prime Minister, to visit the site. In Brantford, David Zura, City News. It seems weird that just stating that our staff are vaccinated is so, something so controversial. A website intended to inform customers which businesses have fully vaccinated staff is now closed after businesses on that website are targeted for harassment. Safetodo.ca is now closed, with its operator saying he's received hateful messages, including one that required a report to police. In a series of tweets, operator Brandon Metallo says whenever he added a new business to Safe To Do, it would be hit by fake Google reviews, fake reservations, and harassment by phone and email. Metallo tweeted that he couldn't continue to add businesses to the listing in good conscience and that he faced significant numbers of hate messages targeting him in particular. We can't figure out why these people are so vocal and why they're, why they're so opposed to this, but you know, we're, we're thankful that it is a minority. Doug Appledorn is co-owner of the People's Pint, a Toronto brew pub that was one of the first two businesses on Safe To Do. He says he just wanted to let immunocompromised customers and those who otherwise can't be vaccinated know that his staff has had their shots. He emphasizes nobody on staff was forced to be vaccinated and that he's not asking customers for vaccine proof. We have no way of of policing that, I and mean, that's not, not something we want to put on our staff to have to do. Um, that's why I find it kind of odd that the province hasn't come up with some sort of guidelines um, that businesses can follow in order to do this. Now, City News reached out to Safe To Do's operator, Brandon Metallo, to see if he would be up for an interview, but as of broadcast, we haven't heard back yet. Apple Duren says before the site closed, Metallo pulled the businesses involved, asking if they wanted to see the site continue. While he doesn't know poll results, he says customers have lost a valuable resource. I mean, it's entirely up to anybody to vaccinate or not, but knowing what the status is before you walk into a business, I think is very important. I understand the desire to know the vaccine status of locations that you might be patronizing, 
On the flip side of that, we might also be seeing businesses start to ask customers about their vaccine status. And so those individuals that aren't able to be vaccinated for legitimate reasons could be singled out by that. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. Vancouver's news is always available on the radio with News 1130 or online anytime at citynews1130.com. Your next edition of City News is tonight at 11 o'clock. Thanks for watching and have a great night.